literature searching and reading. There are three main things that I want to talk about here. The first is how to get started in a topic, because a lot of people jump immediately to the technical literature and they get stuck. They find it difficult and get very frustrated. And that's actually not the best thing to do. So first, we'll talk about how to get started. The next thing, uh, suppose we want to do a thorough literature search to make ourselves a subject matter expert and talk about how to do that. And then in the end, finally, we have to talk about the technical journal article and the proper way to read those because they're going to be difficult throughout your entire career. They're still difficult for me. So don't get intimidated when you pick those up and they're hard to read and think that you're, you're dumb or you'll never get it or whatever uh, because they're tough. And there's a lot of reasons for that that we'll talk about. Getting started on a topic. The main mistake I think that people make is jumping straight to the technical literature. And the technical literature, and we'll talk about why they're difficult, but they're very difficult to read. I still have a hard time picking up the technical literature and understand what's being said. So don't do that. Let's do this another way. To get started on a very new topic, and maybe you're even new to research, I think the much better resources are things like textbooks, master's theses, PhD dissertations, websites, review articles. That sort of is from the technical literature, but they're more of an introductory review kind of thing and not really presenting new information. And then also personal conversations with people, send emails to people, talk to professors at your university, uh, lots of things you can do there. But I did not say the technical literature here. And that's because the resources I have listed have a lot more pages, a lot more space that they can expand on things. A problem when you write a paper for the literature is that often it's five or 10 pages, there's a page limit. You've got a lot of stuff you want to talk about, and you just can't include all of the introductory material to teach that to somebody that's new. So that's not where that happens, but the introductory stuff can happen in things like textbooks and theses and dissertations. So these are the best places to get started on a new topic. I do that to this day. If I want to learn something new, this is where I start. I rarely go to the technical literature. That comes later once I start to know a little bit about what I'm talking about in this new subject. Searching the literature. The start of your literature search is tough and daunting. And I'm assuming here the goal is to do this literature search. So you want to become somewhat of a subject matter expert. Now, this does not mean that you are an expert. It just means you have an awareness for the topics. You have an awareness for who are the key players in it and what's the new stuff going on because you've read a lot about it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you've worked in it. So this is especially hard for new and obscure topics where you're thinking to yourself, oh, gosh, what are even the keywords to search for here? And that's really the first step is identify keywords for your search. And sometimes it could take a day or two before you even find that first paper. But once you do, once you find that first paper or two, well, very often they'll have the keywords in there or the, the words that people are using to describe this subject. Very often those papers will also reference other places. So finding that first paper is key because that's where you get the keywords and some initial citations to start your literature search. You have lots of resources available to you to do other searches. I've listed here my, my local university where I work, University of Texas, El Paso. So here's a link you could do searches from that library. Your local university will have that. Uh, I am an electrical engineer, so IEEE Explore is big for people in my area. Don't forget about Google Scholar. That's pretty good. Uh, APS Physics Journals, Optica, which does optics. That was previously the Optical Society of America. They've renamed themselves to Optica, so anything optical. Uh, that's a great place to go. SPI Digital Library. And in whatever your subject area is, there's going to be specific journals, and you can go to those journals and search. A big thing here is a literature search is not going to Google. 
typing in a sentence and just going to the first thing. Um, do a Google search, but do other things. Go straight to the key journals and search there because you'll pull up a lot more. Consider do, doing your literature search in waves. Remember, the assumption here is that we're doing some somewhat of a comprehensive literature search. And so in the first wave, pick a topic or questions that I want to research, and I'll go and just download every possible thing that I can find, that I may have a thumb drive full of 100 PDFs. And then I'll, I'll read through those. I'll take notes. I'll map it out. I'll see what papers, those papers reference that maybe I haven't found, and I'll learn what I can from that wave. Then in the second wave, I'm probably refining my topic or questions. I have papers that my previous round of papers have pointed to that I have now want to get, and I'll go essentially repeat this all over. I'll go download everything in my slightly refined topic, and I'll read that and take notes, and I may repeat this in several waves. And keep doing this until you find it difficult to find new information. And you'll know this is happening because you'll read a paper and you'll say to yourself, oh, gosh, OK, all they're doing is this. And I've seen that three other times or papers keep referencing the same preliminary paper and you're just struggling to find new stuff. When that happens, you know that you're nearing the end of your literature search and hopefully beginning to become a subject matter expert. So how to obtain things from the literature? Well, most modern things are available through PDF, and if you have access to your library, they'll have access to lots of places where you can go and you can get journal articles or even eBooks in PDF format. Some of the older things aren't available in a PDF type of format, but lean on your library for that. They can borrow books from other universities. They can go back and look up older journals and print those out for you and things like that. So. Be sure to lean on your library if you can't find any sort of PDF. I love PDFs because I can import those into my notebooks and take notes and all that. When you're doing your literature search, it's really important to stay organized. So if everything's in PDF format, well, create subfolders, start organizing them. I think if there's any key papers, you could import Port that into something like, I like Microsoft OneNote, but there's other note-taking apps. There's nothing necessarily special about that. It happens to be the one that I use. Um, import your PDF into that, then you can take notes right on it. Uh, make mind maps, do other things, but stay organized because very often you'll be doing your, your literature search and think, oh gosh, okay, I read this one little nugget that I need, and where was that little nugget? Well, if you're organized, you can go look that up and you can learn more and learn faster by staying organized. Reading a journal article. This will be our last topic. And now the assumption is you got the tough article. This is the one that doesn't do a lot of introduction. How do we read this? Is there an easy way? And what you'll notice, actually reading the article is one of the last things to do. Let's talk about why journal articles are hard to read. Well, as I mentioned before, they're very dense and complicated. That's because authors are space limited. The journals often limit somebody to you know, five or 10 pages. So they have to say whatever it is they need to say in just five or 10 pages. And think about the obligation of the author. Everything in that article, it's required that it can be reproduced by somebody else sufficiently experienced in that field. So that kind of sets some rules of how complete that paper needs to be. And so in the end, what gets cut, it's the introductory stuff. And so that gets cut in favor of here's what I did, how I did it, why I did it, and my conclusions. Not necessarily why this topic is important, although there's always a few sentences in the beginning on that. So in these, there's a lot of concepts that they just jump straight into it. They don't take time to introduce it or explain it thoroughly. Uh, sometimes if you struggle with an article, maybe you can look up and see where that person did their PhD. There might be some of that information in their PhD dissertation. Or if it's a faculty member, they might have a student working on that. You can look at their students' dissertations. Very often you can find introductory material and in that in other sources. 
Another problem, these can be hard to read, and this is unfortunately too common. Uh, very often, they're just bad writing. <laughs> and maybe there's a language thing going on, or we aren't trained at STEM people in writing, and I think that's unfortunate. And so the writing can come out very poorly. Another thing, they're boring. We're not working action and adventure into our technical journal articles. That's not really the place for action and adventure. But if it's bad writing and boring, and you've already read a whole bunch of stuff and you're getting burned out a little bit, well, the, the boring really amplifies that. Another reason, and we'll get into how to do this properly, but maybe you're reading the article incorrectly. And the last thing is perhaps you just don't have the background to understand the article, in which case go read the textbooks and master's theses and PhD dissertations and all those things that we listed earlier in this video. Get yourself the background and then you can better understand what's in the technical literature. The first step for reading a journal article is to start with the abstract. The purpose of the abstract is to just give you enough information about what the paper contains. The abstract is not meant to summarize the paper, its conclusions and methods and all that. It's meant to describe what's in the article. So its whole purpose is so that you can read the abstract and know whether you should go on and read that paper or not. Now, when you become a writer and you write the abstract, have your marketing hat on and write the abstract in a way that will make people want to go read your paper, but be very honest and clear and complete about the contents of your paper. So the abstract is first. Step two is to scan the article. So this is really building on the abstract. You looked at the abstract to see what the paper contains. Now you're gonna go see for yourself. You're gonna look at the figures and the section headings and equations and some of the high level things like that, that's going to give you a much better idea of what's in the paper. Again, you're just scanning it to see what's in the paper, get a general idea of the problems that they're addressing and perhaps their solutions. Step three, if the article is too challenging, somehow it's not making sense, put it aside, save it for later. Also, if the article is not relevant to you, throw it out and ignore it, delete it, move on. By step four, you should be at a point where you're thinking to yourself, okay, this paper, this has what I need. It seems like it's pretty well written. I'm gonna start digging into this. Start with the introduction. That's actually the most valuable part when you're starting your literature search. This is where you're getting keywords, this is where if they're identifying uh, other researchers in the area that have done other things, that's where they're citing them and you have other citations that you can chase. So, and the introduction very often kind of sets up and establishes what's happening in the paper and its layout. So the introduction is the next thing that you should read. Step five, read the conclusion. Notice we're all the way at step five and we haven't even truly read the paper yet. We're, we're jumping around just reading select parts. But the conclusion is really important and also keep this in mind when you write your own conclusions. But everything in the paper is summarized there. The, the methods, the why it was done and all of the conclusions of the research is all there. Now, by the time you've scanned the article, read the abstract, read the introduction, read the conclusion, you're gonna know if this is relevant to you or not. And if it's not, delete it, get rid of it, never come back. If it's too challenging, put it aside, save it for later. Now, finally, at step six, read the rest of the article. But by the time you've worked through the abstract, the introduction, conclusion, you've skimmed the figures and equations and section headings, you're gonna have a better idea what's in the paper and you'll digest what's in the body of the paper much more easily. The very last step for reading a journal article is taking notes. Now, some people like to print it out on their printer and then take notes directly on that, whether it's highlights or notes on the side. Other people like to bring their PDFs into a note-taking app and write and highlight directly on that. 
Maybe you just write notes on the side. Whatever it is, take notes, map out the information, write down key points. And if you start doing this for a lot of papers, well, you start getting a really good map of information. In conclusion, we covered four different things. Uh, the first one, we realized that reading the literature can be very difficult, especially when you're just getting started. So we talked about special resources when you're just getting started. Don't jump to the technical journal articles. Look at textbooks and websites and master's theses and PhD dissertations and talk to people and things like that. We also talked about how to perform a comprehensive literature search and how you know when you're coming to the end of that because you find it difficult to find new information. And then last, we talked about how to actually read a technical journal article. And interestingly, actually reading the article is one of the very last steps. I hope you found this helpful.